Not that long ago, I did a video for you guys showcasing the S23 Ultra's experience of using it over 24 hours, going from LA to New York and back. That was a great video. I think you guys had a lot of good response for that, but now we have the Pixel 8 Pro. I'm not trying to compare that to the S23 Ultra, but I wanna share with you guys my long-term review. I've had this device since launch and I've been using it as a daily driver and I've been traveling with this. So my review is gonna be focusing more about not only just the experience of using the Pixel 8 Pro, which again, thank you to Team Pixel for sending this out, but also the ability of sharing with you guys what to expect when you're traveling, when you're using eSIM, when you're using international SIMs, what services work well in the US and maybe not so well when you're traveling since the experience on the 8 Pro is a little bit different than what we've seen from Google before. This is TK and this is my long-term review of the Pixel 8 Pro and what to expect when traveling. Let's check it out. I mean, nothing better than be able to use a phone wherever you want and do with everything you want to do with it, especially when there's like a lot of noise like this. You can actually cancel out a lot of that. I'm in Hong Kong right now for a week with the family, so why not definitely test out the Pixel 8 Pro? goes without saying obviously that you know when in Shenzhen you got to be able to check out some of those amazing lights and you can see absolutely how fantastic it is um, I'm actually here for another event that I'm actually covering some of the stuff for them but a really nice thing to be able to do is to travel with the device and be able to use it on all different aspects we're using the front-facing camera obviously some of the best experiences are gonna be there but it's just crazy like look 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 where I am like it's just amazing and everything is done very nicely all on the device and it works really good Traveling is always fun when you have the right device. So one of the things that I really like about the device is the connectivity and the options of connectivities that we have here. I'm traveling right now to Hong Kong for about a week and I also had a quick stop in Shenzhen covering an event for another company. Hopefully that video will come out very soon. But the biggest thing about this is the connectivity. How I'm able to connect, how I'm able to get Google services and everything. Because as you can imagine in Shenzhen, being that it's in China, 
I need to be able to actually connect and get all that content through Google services that typically doesn't work here. So one of the things I'll probably say is eSIMs, things like that. I've been using a service that I've used for quite some time called Eralo. And um, there's a link for that in the description if you ever really need to use it. But it does a really decent job of connecting me through the firewall, meaning I don't have to turn on a VPN. I'm able to connect to services. I can uh, update applications, do whatever I want. But I will say that being on a metered connection means that we don't typically back up things. Some of the functions that require internet connectivity to be backed up first, and I wanna show you guys real quick that beautiful sunrise right here. That's right there, sunrise and now I'm about to leave. And it requires some services where it needs to be uploaded directly to the Google services uh, in photos to be able to run some of those uh, effects and so on, especially the stylized options. It's a little bit harder when you're not connected to a uh, basically like unlimited 5G or something in your home network or even outside of China in Hong Kong, which runs a little bit better. So keep that in mind when you're selecting the storage capacity. Also, keep that in mind when you're trying to get some of those services in areas where, again, Google services are not running. It does run. It does work. Uh, eSIMs typically like this that run in the regional section as far as being Asia, you know, China, as well as Hong Kong will work perfectly fine. I wish I had a bigger storage, but otherwise, I think this has been a really good experience for me using my main SIM card for obviously connectivity, but the eSIM for internet so that I can actually get access to the internet and Google services, even though I'm in Shenzhen, where typically this information or this type of services is locked. But other than that, it's a beautiful town. I really am sorry to be leaving, but I'm going back to Hong Kong. We'll do some more coverage from there, but it absolutely is a necessary thing to know when you're traveling with a device, what to expect and what will and will not work. Internet connectivity on all subways in Hong Kong are absolutely fantastic. I need to lose internet once. Streaming, music, everything works great. And it allows me to actually get where I need to go. Google services run really good, so Google Maps run really nice. Uber works really nice in Hong Kong. One thing I noticed though that um, I think overall pricing is a little bit better on Uber, so I like that a little bit more. The Metro, of course, or MTR is going to be the best and ultimately the fastest transport. One of my favorite features of the Pixel 8 Pro, which I know it's not necessarily just a Pixel device uh, feature, it's available with many, many uh, other devices. It's the ability of actually sharing my Wi-Fi network. So let's say I buy access to a specific Wi-Fi network on the plane, or even here, let's say right now, I'm at the Hong Kong airport at the 24 hour food mart, trying to finish up some editing before we get on the plane. And I'm actually able to subscribe to one service, share that network using the hotspot directly from my phone. And then now my laptop and my other device can share that same connection without me having to pay three different subscriptions while I'm the only one using the services. So to, in, in many ways, this is something that is very appreciative. Uh, Pixel makes it very simple, very easy, and uh, I love those functions as well. And again, I'll probably also say one of my other really cool and really uh, unique features that I love Pixel about is the ability of basically, let's say you're opening up Instagram and you can open up, uh, shift the app into recent. Um, it gives us the option to be able to actually save the image directly. It'll take a shorter, a smaller, lower resolution image, but if you ever wanted to be able to do a quick snapshot or a quick snippet of an image that you see on Instagram, it becomes very, very cool. So just bring up, up to, to recent, hit the image and say save or share, and then you're ready to share that information. Again, a lot of people around us, but it, one of the better situations here is I'm actually going to be using audio eraser to reduce the background noise. So, really cool stuff. The time on this trip is coming to an end. I'm about to start embarking back home. I'll share with you guys some of the images, obviously, that I'm able to take with this. And, of course, share with you guys uh, kind of like a summarization of how has it been traveling with the Pixel 8 Pro. 
I'll start off by saying is that connectivity obviously has been not a problem. I haven't been able to pick up 5G here, but that could be also a limitation because I'm using a circuit that only offers 4G LTE, which has been actually pretty reasonable. Running it as a dual SIM does technically absorb or take more battery and it does keep the device a little bit warmer, although it's actually a lot better than what we had with the Pixel 7 Pro. This definitely does not get as warm or even close enough to being as warm as the Pixel 7 Pro. Now, when it comes to the cameras, I'm pretty sure you guys have already noticed this, the cameras are absolutely fantastic. Computational photography, as well as getting the better in the sensors that we have in here, the ultra wide, the telephoto, it, you're definitely not going to be disappointed. And of course, what we're getting here with the main sensor that I'm recording this on with you guys. A lot of the footage that you're going to see are from Hong Kong, nighttime, daytime, uh, going over to Victoria Peak, going over to obviously uh, even going to the Buddha there. A lot of those images were taken candidly, easy, quick snaps, and this is one of the things pixels are known for. It's the camera that you know you're going to get a great picture without having to second guess it and it becomes almost like muscle memory. I was showing this to one of my friends. I double press the power button, put the phone in front of me, snap the picture, turn off the phone, and I didn't even have to look at the preview. I knew the type of image that I got. Anything that requires AI, anything that requires online services from Google, unfortunately, when you're traveling, will get a little bit uh, of a slowdown in the process. Unlimited data is not exactly available everywhere, especially if you're traveling internationally, so you're gonna need to depend on things that are run on device. Magic Eraser runs great. Um, Auto Eraser runs really good. Anything that requires stylizing where the photo needs to be uploaded to Google Photos to get processed. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to do that because I don't wanna run out of data. It does require a lot of content to upload or data to upload the, the content to the cloud and process it and bring it back down. So I'll do that when I get back home. So with that being said, it's really, really good. I have been using also the uh, Google One uh, VPN uh, from on and off, depending where, uh, where I was. And for that matter, I think everything is going to work great. What you should expect with a Pixel is a very much slightly tailored experience when you're traveling, really great when you're in hometown, and I really would recommend you going in with at least 256 gigs of storage. The 128 is good, but I'm running out of space. I went on a one couple of trips right after each other, and since I'm not backing up to the cloud and I can't delete things off my phone, I'm seriously running out of uh, space, and that's something to keep in mind. But otherwise, uh, I definitely would appreciate any comments from you guys. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think of the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro? Have you considered getting them? And have you enjoyed the benefits that they brought with the Tensor G3 over what we've had in the past? I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for the support.